are going to continue from where we stopped. Now, last video, we talked about the safe days and we talked about the menstrual cycle. And today we are continuing from where I stopped the fertility awareness methods. And remember when we are finishing the last video, we talked about these as the methods, the fertility awareness methods. These are like the methods. It's also part, it's part of the birth control methods and this is like one of the methods. And wh what do these methods do? Methods are used in a way that we are able to, tr women are able to track their days, all the menstrual days. And they are supposed to know the day when ovulation occurs and knowing when ovulation occurs, we can, or oh, they can, know exactly when the safe days will be and the unsafe days. So, these farms, one of the methods you can use is the temperature method. The temperature method. And under this method, how do we use this method? Under this method, a woman is supposed to measure her temperature every morning. And that's, the temperature is good taken when she has not yet gotten out of bed. Right after waking up, you take a temperature for each and every day up to the 30th day. And how does this temperature help us? You know, or we can know that this temperature varies. And if there is no other factor that's affecting this temperature, like sickness or stress, we can know that this temperature can increase slightly on this 14th day when our ovulation takes place. It can increase between these days, the 13th to the 16th, this range. And we can know that that's when ovulation takes place and we can estimate these other days. That's the temperature method. I will not go deep into it, we shall talk about it, but for now, let's do that. Then, the other is the cervical. The cervical mucus method. Here, this method, we use the cervical mucus. Oh, that's the vagina, you know, the discharge. You know, this discharge is actually, it happens each and every morning. Oh, throughout the night and when you wake up in the morning you can actually check the thickness and the color and the texture and we can know this or we can estimate this period the 13th, the 14th and the 15th day depending on this discharge and you notice that between these days that discharge will be thick and the color will be dark so we can also use this method and there is also the calendar method this calendar method can also be used and this calendar method is like you have to actually access your doctor or a clinic and you get a chart where we mark these days and we can actually give you the details of how this method works but then these fertility awareness methods in order to get the very accurate way we are supposed to use the two methods at the same time we use the temperature and the cervical mucus method at the same time to get the actual or the most accurate though you can also use one of them and get the correct results and i have to state that this method we using the farms or using the safe days is an effective method and that actually it's estimated at 75% effective. That is that 25% of the women that try it actually get pregnant. So it's a risk method. But this 75% is also effective. And the only disadvantage that I can talk about here is that 
it can protect you from the STDs or the sexually transmitted diseases. So you have to notice this also. So, how do we know our CFDs? That's our next thing to talk about here. How do we know our CFDs? Oh, how do you know? The CFDs, all the days that you're known for that. First of all, we have this first day. This is the, the first day is the day when you have your menses. The first day, that's the day you notice any of your menses. These can take three or to five days. And in some people it can take seven days. So, and remember our ovulation, if we are taking this as average, the 28th month, we know ovulation will take place here on the 14th day. So, first of all, for fertilization to occur, we need a sperm. And this sperm, when it's released, it is viable for three, three to five days. So, in case, because you know our ovulation is taking place here. So, in case this sperm is released around here on the 11th day, we know the sperm will still be viable on this day. So, by the time this ovulation occurs, the sperm can actually fertilize our egg and pregnancy can occur. So, how do we know that this day is safe and this day is not? So you have to put in consideration these five days of the sperm and also we take into consideration the day when ovulation occurs. So we have to subtract this 14th day minus our five days. We get an approximation of nine. So to be so sure, we will take our eighth day. We will move one this ninth day. We will take our eighth day. So we can know that from the day when our menses stop to the eighth day, a man, this is actually a safe zone. Oh, can our safe days. This range from the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth. So in case our sperm is released here, we will take five days and one, two, three, four, five. So by the time ovulation actually occurs, this sperm is no longer viable or you cannot fertilize this egg. So this is our first range. We actually one, two, three. These are three days. And so this ovulation, when ovulation occurs, this egg lasts 24 hours. That's the period, 24 hours, that's the period when it can be fertilized. Pregnancy occurs. So, these 24 hours, so we have to subtract that one day from this 14th day. Or you add that one day to this 14th day. So when you add that day, we will get 15th and to be so sure, we will consider the 16th day. So, if we are to consider the days that a woman is fertile, these days are actually 7 days. 7 days fertility so that will be the range from this eighth day to at around the 16th day those are the days when a person will be fertile or from this 19th to the 16th those will be the seven days so by from continuing from this 7 16th to the 17th day the person will be actually safe or it will be a safe zone. You are not safe safeness from them or it's safeness from pregnancy. So it will be from this 16th, we will take this period up to the, the other time or up to the end of the month or the other time when you see your other menses. That period will be safe also. So these are safe, the, the unsafe days, there will be seven of them and these days, these other, these other days, from the 5th to 8th, then from the 16th to the last day, there will be safe days. But not to forget, this, if we are using these safe days as our control, or as our birth control, or pregnancy control method, 
we have to make sure that at least in these seven days we have to use another method or to abstain and not to engage in those activities or engage in sex activities. So the other misconceptions that are there for these for these safe days all our farms fertility awareness methods is that at times there are variations between women and at times a person can actually have two ovulations in one month so you can target one this ovulation and there is yet another ovulation that's going to take place maybe around the 28th day so you have to take that into also consideration you have to first monitor very well your days and know what happens in those days and know exactly when so you have to take at least two months and observe your months well before you try out this so that is it for the safe days thank you very much and don't forget to subscribe my doctor Thank you.